study in the UK, um, this could be one of the options that would not break your bank or your family's bank. Um, yeah, because it's, it, it is more affordable. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, uh, but if you're new to this video and to my channel, welcome. My name is Mavis and I make videos about um, information and tips on student life in the UK. So if you enjoy any of this content um, and you would like to know more, please click subscribe um, and then we'll move to the video today. So in today's video, I'll be talking to you guys about um, what you need to do if you do want to study in the UK. Um, and the first thing that you need to secure will be a um, number of funds um, because you need money <laughs> to come to study to the UK um, because everyone knows that studying overseas are not cheap. You can secure your funds by getting either A, self-funding them or you can get a scholarship. With self-funding, um, things are slightly more flexible in comparison to getting a scholarship um, because with scholarships, usually you're tied either to the company that provides the scholarship or in my brother's case, he received a scholarship from the government. So he received the scholarship um, called JPA scholarship and um, he got it and he funded his studies from A-levels up to university. Whereas in my case, I self-funded and my parents helped out as well. If you do need to know any bodies or any companies that are um, doing any scholarships for students who would like to study overseas, you can just um, follow me on my Instagram. When it comes for you to apply the student visa, um, I believe sometimes, sometimes they might ask you to show proof of funds, to show that you are able to support yourself. I think that they would require you to show proof of funds that it will be enough to cover or support your living costs and tuition fees for at least a year. So which is why um, these are things that you have to consider. I believe that you don't have to but they might ask so this is something that you have to consider and you also need to remember that um, you need to put a certain amount of money in the bank account for a certain number of days. I believe it's like 28 days that the, the amount of money has to be in the account for. Um, so again, this is something that you have to consider when you're applying to study in the UK. Besides securing the funds, um, the next thing that you need to do is to know what sort of pre-U or pre-university course that you want to take to help you enter the university of your choice in the UK. Um, previously, I took A-levels and so did my younger brother. Both of us took our A-levels in Taylor's College. A-levels is a pre-U course that is widely accepted in all universities in the, in the UK um, because I believe it is a, a, it's a Cambridge test, it's a Cambridge exams, um, so which is why it is widely accepted in the UK. There are also other pre-university um, courses that you can take. Um, but you also have to check with your university of choice in the UK whether they accept those pre-U courses. So if just say you, you are already studying a pre-U course and, and you're halfway through uh, and you think, oh, did I take the wrong course to enter a university in the UK? Um, do not worry, just check with your university because sometimes they do accept some pre-U courses or some diploma as the entry requirement. Um, so all you have to do is just really inquire to see whether you fit the requirements that they need. Uh, this is because I also believe that um, besides A-levels, there, there are other pre-U courses such as um, Sunway. They have their own they have their own pre-U course, which I know is specifically to go to for for Australia. I think it's for Australia's um, entry requirement, but who knows, um, maybe some universities in the, in the UK might accept that as well. But I believe it also depends on the course that you're studying in the UK, so um, just double check with them. 
and take your time to do the research. The next thing you have to prepare yourself will be an English test called the IELTS. Um, it's just a requirement by most universities in the UK just to make sure that you understand and you've got the minimum requirement or minimum understanding of the English, lang English language before you can study over here. Um, IELTS is one of it. I've also read, um, read around to see that uh, some universities, they do accept um, Duolingo's test. Um, but again, this is up to you to get your research to see if your university of your choice accepts those tests. Because as far as I know, IELTS are more widely acceptable as this is one of the major English tests that they use. Now when you have your funds and you've already started your pre-U and you're doing your IELTS exam or any English exams, the next thing that you need to think about would be which university it would be for your choice because you will then have to start applying to those universities, um, especially when you are doing your pre-U course such as your A-levels. Um, what, what would they... What they will usually need is, during my time, I think um, they take, because A-levels is divided into two, two sections, so you get AS and AS level and A-levels. Um, with the AS levels, it's sort of like the first year of the A-levels, um, and when you, go, when you get that result, you can usually use that to go and get the... Uh, to get a conditional offer from your UC of your choice. So it's something like your SPM and how you want to get into college. Now with these results, you can then start to apply to the universities um, because sometimes application would take quite a, quite a while because you would not be the only one. There will be thousands of students from all around the world trying to study into the UK. Um, you can make your application through a platform called the UCAS, so it's U-C-A-S. And on there, um, basically all you have to do is just, you know, fill in the forms and, and also you have to prepare a personal statement. This personal statement, just consider it as selling yourself to the university on why you should be chosen to study there. Even though you've got the money to study over there, it doesn't mean that they will choose you because um, they will also have other requirements to make sure that the quality of the students for that university is always at par. If you are not sure of how to apply to the UK, there will be a few um, I would say student agents or educational consultants in Malaysia. I think usually they'll be located in Klang Valley or in Subang. Um, where they'll be able to help you and guide you through the process. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe their service will usually be free because when I had to do them uh, a long while back, um, they, they, it, the service is free because they usually get the commissions from the university. So again, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong because it's been quite a while and things might have changed. But so far as I can remember, um, the service is to help you and to guide you on how to apply to for the universities are free. If you think coming to the UK for the full four years or three years for your degree can be quite um, expensive, um, just check with your local university if they do a transfer program. Now with the transfer program, it means that you can do your studies in a local uni for the first one or two years and then you can transfer over to the university of your choice in UK for the second last part of your studies or the final year itself. Now, personally for me, I I started studying over here since the first year and I, st and I studied on for four years for my degree. Um, but I know that they have friends, there are friends while I was studying in that uni, there are friends that um, did that transfer course so a lot of them came for the final year or and there are a number of them that came in midway so they transfer during their second year so this I feel will be a good alternative if you really want to come to the UK to study but I think that the the full cost of the three or the four years cost is slightly too expensive and you can choose to do the the one and a half year or the final year um, studies years 
in the UK itself as this won't really break the bank as much. You just have to make sure that the local university of your, the one in Malaysia would have some partnership forms with the university in the UK um, because then you would be able to transfer your credit over and you would be able to graduate with the UK cert. And for this, you just have to do your own research to find out. But just bear in mind that if you do want to study in the UK, um, this could be one of the options that would not break your bank or your family's bank. Um, yeah, because it's, it, it is more affordable. When you apply for the university and you meet all their requirements, um, they will usually then give you a offer letter. This offer letter, or they will call it the CAS, C-A-S, um, is what you would need to apply for your tier 4 uh, student visa. And when you apply for the visa, you pray to all the gods and hopefully your visa will not be rejected. Soon after that, you'll be able to buy your plane ticket and then start packing and then make your way um, to the UK. Now, before you come to the UK, there are a few things that you have to also consider such as getting accommodation, setting up bank account, and um, getting a new phone number and all these sort of things. So if you're interested in having more information about the things that I've just listed before, um, please feel free to subscribe um, and then click the like button and share this around with all your friends who will be coming to the UK with you. Even if they're not, give them something to learn about. Uh, and then I'll see you guys the next time. Bye!